Hello everyone. Uh, in this uh, lecture we're going to continue our discussion on uh, the Prolog programming language, which uh, as you recall is a logic programming language. And we're going to start with uh, a special kind of query in Prolog, which is called guess and verify. <coughs> it's also called the generate and test. Uh, this kind of a query works like this. Uh, we're basically asking a question. Remember, query is something that we can pose in the interpreter when we are asking Prolog to find the solution to our query. So we're asking a question like, is there an S such that guess S and verify S are true, where guess S and verify are sub-goals? So Prolog will try to find solutions to the guess part until a solution is found, which also satisfies the verify part. So we can think of it this way. Uh, we're trying to guess a solution or find the solution to the guess part, and then we will verify that solution in the verify part. And remember, uh, we are demanding that both guess and verify, which are sub-goals, are, are both true. So a guess and verify rule takes this form. If guess s and verify s, then we conclude that the overall uh, query is true. So uh, let's uh, immediately take an example to, to try to get a feeling for what we're talking about here. And uh, uh, we're going to use the member relation, which is a built-in relation in Prolog. And uh, the member relation is actually very simple. Uh, to implement in Prolog, the member relation is like a um, like a member. Of, uh, re recall that w we discussed uh, a member function in a, a functional uh, language, and this is very similar. Here we uh, are building a, a writing a member relation, which basically um, tells us whether a given element is part of a list or not. So member m, where m is the element, uh, in a list which has m as its head and then some tail, this is true, this is a fact. If m is at the head of the list, then obviously m, the element that, the element m is, is part of the list. So this is a fact. And notice this special syntax here. We have a list in, in, in a, uh, enclosed in brackets. Then we have a pipe that uh, distinguishes between the head and the tail. Uh, M here is a variable, which stands for the uh, head element. And this underscore is as a kind of a wildcard, which means that um, it can stand for any element. So this is... Uh, we can look at this as the base case of the recursion. Now, in the recursive case, we say that M is a member of the list which has some element in uh, at its head and then some tail if M is a member of the tail. Notice that the underscore here, which is a wildcard, cannot unify with this M. It cannot have the value M. It can have any value but not M here. So uh, we're basically saying if uh, M is not part, is not uh, the uh, the head of the list, then M is part of the uh, part of this overall list that contains a head and a tail if it is part of the tail. And this is very similar to the 
implementations that we looked at uh, for the member function in a, in a functional language like uh, Scheme or, or SML. Okay, so we're going to use this uh, member function and, and actually let me just, uh, since it's a, a built-in function, I can uh, pose a query here in, in the interpreter. So I can say, uh, is 5 a member of the list uh, 1, 2, 5, 4? And I get back true. Uh, is, mem is 5 member of the list 1, 2, 3, 4? It's false. And I can also ask a question like, is there, is there a, a, an X such that X is a member of the list 1, 2, 3, 4? Yes, X can be 1. And now I hit a semicolon to get f more solutions. X can be 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so we looked at the member uh, uh, relation. Now, let us assume that we have this rule or, or relation called overlap. Overlap x, y. Overlap x, y is true if member m, x is true and member m, y is true. So what does this mean? Well, we can say that two lists, x and y, overlap if some atom m exists which belongs to both lists. Notice that we, ha we have an m variable here in the first member subquery and the same m variable here in the second member subquery. So we're, we're asking, is, is there such, is, does there exist an m which is a member of x and that same m is a member of y. If that is true, then we deduce that there is an overlap between x and y. So this query is an example of a guess and verify uh, query, meaning the query on the right hand side here. So, well, we can say the right hand side rule actually here is, a, is an example of a guess and verify. Why is that? It's because this first goal, this first sub goal here, m, member m, x, guesses, guesses an m from the list x, while the second goal verifies that m also belongs to the list y. And notice that we, what we did earlier, when we asked the question or posed this query, m member x, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, we're basically guessing we're guessing all the values of x. Well, we're using the term guessing here because of course it's not guessing here. We, we, we're just finding all the solutions, all the members, according to the, the implementation of the member relation. So, uh, if we post this query here on the slide, member m in the list a, b, c, d, comma, member m in the list 1, comma, 2, comma, c, comma, d, what are we asking? Is there uh, an element which is a member of the list a, b, c, d, that's the element m here, and that element is also a member of the list 1, 2, C, D. So what's going to happen is that Prolog will guess, in quotes, it'll guess um, uh, the values for M for the first subquery, and then verify if that M is part of the second list as well. And notice that all the possible values for M in the first query are A, B, C, and D. Because when we do this, we're just asking, is there an M which is a part of A, B, C, D? We get all the four solutions. 
Now if we if we verify this by using the whole query that I typed in earlier, I get only the value C and D. Notice now I'm asking I have a comma in between, which means that I'm, I, uh, there's an and, this, this is a conjunction. So the first subquery has to be tree, true, and the second subquery has to be true as well. So C and D are uh, members of both the list A, B, C, D and the list 1, 2, C, D. Now if I remember how to load a file, if you have written a program uh, in some text file. You can load it in and you can use the consult relation in my case it's um, in this directory if I remember it correctly right and the overlap uh, relation is just uh, implemented exactly the way that we see here Overlap x, y is true if there exists an m, which is a member of x, and also a member of y. So, if I post this query, is there, a, is there an overlap between these two lists? Then I get back true, because... Prolog is able to find a solution to the right hand side. The right hand side of the overlap um, clause. A solution to this right, uh, right hand side, member m, x and member m, y. And we saw that, that the solution was, uh, we had actually two solutions, m is equal to c and m is e equal to d. So, in this case, there is an overlap, and it's actually C and D. So this is a, this is an example of uh, what we call the uh, uh, guess and the verify. Now. Uh, Connected to this discussion is the concept of uh, backtracking. And uh, this is one of the, uh, uh, th this is, this is at, the, at the heart of the uh, prologue algorithm, which we will actually discuss in some detail later. And uh, let's uh, introduce this concept uh, with this uh, simple example here. We have four facts in our program. We have uh, the relation likes. Uh, likes Mary food and we interpret it in this way that Mary likes food, that Mary likes tea, John likes tea and John likes Mary. And if we pose a question a query likes Mary comma X comma likes John comma X then we're asking the question does there exist an X such that Mary likes X and John likes it as well and notice that this is actually uh, an example of a guess and verify uh, query because we prologue will, uh, will try to find the value for X here so it guesses a value for x, which will be ver for, for the first subcall, which will then be verified for the second part. So when we post the query likes Mary, x, we will get that subcall will succeed uh, and x will have the value food because that's the first fact here. So remember, uh, Prolog uh, will. Uh, apply unification so it will unify x the unknown variable here with the with the constant food here 
that will make this first sub goal true. Then it will try to verify that one or satisfy the second sub goal with uh, likes John food. But notice that there is no fact in the in the database in our program which uh, uh, makes this second sub goal true because John does not like food ac according to our program. So what happens then is uh, backtracking. So the prolog algorithm will return to a marked place and try to re-satisfy the previous goal. So that means that uh, it actually failed uh, this unification or the instantiation of x uh, having the value food and now the uh, second possibility is that, uh, that uh, Mary likes tea. So the second sub goal actually failed because John does not like food according to our program. So we will go back to the previous sub goal and try to find another solution for that one. And another possibility is indeed that Mary likes T. So X will be unified with, uh, or actually the relation likes Mary comma X will be unified with the relation likes Mary comma T. And these two uh, terms can be unified by instantiating X with the value T. But if we instantiate x with the value t, it means that we have to check the second sub goal likes John, comma, t. And as you can see, that is true because that's the third fact in our database. So the second sub goal also succeeds and at that point prolog uh, notifies uh, success. So this is a very simple example uh, introducing this concept of backtracking which as I said earlier is the heart of uh, the prolog algorithm. The uh, the control part, remember when we were talking about uh, or introducing uh, uh, logic programming, we said that it consisted of two parts, the logic and the control, and we as um, Prolog programmers, we take care of the logic, which is in the form of these four facts in this simple program here, and then the control part is is taken care of the, the abstract machine, in this, in this case the, the Prolog interpreter. And part of the uh, prolog interpreter or the the control part is this backtracking mechanism and uh, notice that this is indeed what we saw uh, in this uh, example guess and verify that uh, when Prolog was trying to satisfy the first goal here, member m, a, b, c, d. It instantiated m with the value a first, and then checked if that value uh, a was a member of the second list by using the second sub goal, and that failed. What happened then? Prolog backtracked to the previous uh, sub goal and try to find another solution for m, which was then b, and try to verify that in the second sub-goal, and that failed also. And then it backtracked back to the first sub-goal and uh, uh, found a solution which is c, which was indeed true for the second sub-goal. So the second sub-goal was satisfied for the value c, and then it all backtracked for the fourth time to get the uh, final solution, which is m is equal to d, which was also true for the second sub-goal. So 
What we saw earlier for our guess and verify introduction was indeed backtracking. 